In this video, I wanted to cover some of the ways that you can improve your stitching when you're doing picture smocking. So here's an example of just different practice designs that I work on when I'm coming up with a new design to stitch. And hopefully you can see from this that all of the stitches are smooth, there's not twisted threads in the stitches, and uh, so you get really nice results this way. So I am not teaching you in this short video how to picture smock per se, but rather how to get better stitches with your picture smocking or any other smocking that you do. I have a piece of broadcloth pleated up here. This is Imperial Broadcloth, and I like the weight of the Imperial Broadcloth for picture smocking, Rick, so that I can just practice stitches and show you what you're going for and the movement of the hands and the floss and the needle as you stitch. If you're gonna practice this, I would recommend using four different colors of thread. With picture smocking, you always use four strands of floss. I have never ever needed to use more than four strands. I have even done picture smocking with uh, three strands of floss and even with two strands of floss and gotten good results. So it's not the number of threads that you're using that's going to give you the good coverage. It is your technique. And that's something that just takes practice. And so uh, I did not come up with this idea of four different colors of thread. Janet Gilbert did a blog post on picture smocking, and it's an excellent blog post. And in it, she recommended using four different colors of thread to practice your stitches to see if they're looking smooth or not. And this was such a brilliant idea that I have used her idea ever since then when I've taught picture smocking. So you wanna get your four strands of thread and this is how I treat my thread before I ever do any smocking. You wanna stroke your thread and you wanna stroke it. I mean, I stroke 10, 15, 20 times. You should be able to feel the kinks and twists coming out of the thread. Uh, the goal is to get it so that you can see each one of the threads laying next to each other. If that's what it looks like down the course of the thread, and see, you can see where the yellow one's getting twisted here. You want to keep stroking until it's all smooth. I quite regularly hear or read of people recommending that in order to get better stitches for your picture smocking that you can wax your thread or starch your thread or iron your threads to get them smooth. I have personally never needed to use any of those techniques. If that's something that you do and you find it to be successful, I would suggest you continue doing it. But in reality, I have found that if you stroke it enough and get the kinks out that way, nothing else is ever needed to get smooth results. I also was not interested in carrying all these extra products with me if I was taking my smocking along as I smocked at the poolside with the children or waiting in the doctor's office or any place else. So uh, anything that I could do to make it easier and simpler, that's what I did. And stroking the thread it was the magic ticket for me. And then once it's all smooth, you can thread your needle. And most picture smocking uh, books or instructions will recommend using a number five darner needle, which I have done and do quite regularly. And you'll see I continue stroking it even after the needle is threaded because you really want to get all the twists out. 
For this demonstration, I am using a number three darner. And the reason for that is the bigger the needle size, the bigger the hole that will be created in the fabric. And since I'm using a poly cotton fabric, I find that a larger hole is helpful. So, and I'm going to come up somewhere in the middle of this just to demonstrate some stitches. So I'm going to use this line as my guideline for smocking. Each one of the colors are laying right next to each other. You're going to go over to the next pleat, and as you can see, I'm putting the needle in. I'm not twisting my fingers at all as I insert the needle. And then as you pull it through, you want to pull in the direction that the needle is pointed. And after pulling it through, all your colored threads should be laying right next to each other. And I don't know if you observed that, but then as I bring the thread over, the threads are still with each one of the colors lined up next to each other. So again, I haven't twisted it as I've gone through. I've pulled it through and then just carried my hand over to bring the thread over. Once again, you go into the next pleat without twisting. You pick it up without twisting and you pull it through again without twisting and then bring it over to the next pleat. So once again, you can see each one of the threads are laying right next to each other and the part that's ready to be stitched is also laying next to each other. So this needs to be a continuous, smooth motion without twisting anything around. So you pull it through and then you carefully bring it over and your threads will be laying next to each other. Then you take the next stitch. And at no point are you rolling the needle around in your hand. You're also not, you know, flopping your thread here or there or playing with it. I see people doing all kinds of strange things. You want to just keep this as a continuous, smooth motion from one stitch to the next stitch. And if you ever find that you think the threads are not laying next to each other as they're supposed to, you can slide your needle back down to the fabric and then smooth it out again. And once you feel like you've got all the kinks out, you can continue with stitching. Something else that helps some people is using a needle trolley, and I didn't think to bring mine up here. You can also use the needle as a trolley. And in that instance, when you get close to where you're gonna pull it through, you would slide your needle or the trolley so that once again, the threads are laying right next to each other. Whoops, this is awkward, I never do this. And then as you pull it through, it will also pull through with the threads laying next to each other. Pay attention to how you're stitching and what your fingers and needle and thread are doing. But again, this needs to be one continuous smooth motion without a lot of fiddling or twisting of the fingers or the needles or anything else. And with that, you should get nice stitches where you can see that on each stitch the threads are laying right next to each other and you don't have for instance this pink thread starting at the top here but ending you know crossing over other threads and ending down below i hope that makes sense and i hope that that will help you as you do your picture smocking this is also true for geometric smocking. You always want to have smooth thread 
you're going to get a much prettier stitch if your threads aren't all twisted and whatever as you smock along. Um, and that's what I've got for you. So if you've got any questions, please leave them below and I will answer questions as they come. Um, but that is my secret that's really not mine to picture smock. It, it's all in the motion of your hands. So that's what needs to be practiced in order to get a nice smooth, not twisting motion. If you enjoyed this and would like to see more videos, please hit the subscribe button below and subscribe to my YouTube channel.